Welcome back, Nashville Software School students. All right, in this video, we're going to uh, go into a little bit more advanced features of event listeners. We're going to show you how to add event listeners to multiple DOM elements at the same time. So let's go back and look at our code. All right. So today we're going to focus on these article sections right here. Let me expand this just so you can see it a little bit more easily. So I've got an article. It's got three sections inside of it. Each of them has a class called article section. Each one of them has a different inner HTML. All right. So over here in my JavaScript, I've got a DOM selector, get elements by class name. All right. So what is that going to do? Let's console log what that article element is at this point. Just as a refresher, getting elements by class name is always going to return an array. And you see here we have an array with three elements in it. Okay, those three sections, they all have the article section class on them. So I want to add an event listener to all of those to determine if the user has clicked on them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write the logic of what will happen when the user clicks on one of those article sections. So let's come over here. All right, here's a function, handle section click. Now remember, this is going to be the second argument to add event listener. It takes two arguments, the name of the event, and then the function that holds the logic of what we want to do when that event is broadcast. So here I'm just defining, in the previous video, I wrote the function just right in line inside the add event listener method. But I'm writing the function outside of it here to define that. And remember, the browser sends the event. When that event is broadcast, it sends the event in when it executes our function. So that's input. So I had to define input. I'm calling this mouse event. because That's really what a click is. It's a mouse event. So when this gets executed, it looks at the target. Remember, target is what the user clicked on. I'm grabbing in the inner HTML. And again, I'm using that output element over here to give feedback to the user. You say you clicked on the element text section, which is just so happens to be the inner HTML. So if they click on introduction, that's what will be inside element text, body, inclusion, etc. So there's a the logic for it. So to add an event listener to an array of DOM elements, it's simply a for loop. Let's look at this. Here we go. I've got an argument I'm looping over it with a for loop. For each item in there, I'm going to add an event listener, click, just like in the last video, and then the function reference that holds the logic when that event is broadcast. So let's watch what happens here. Save this. Reload my page. Now I'm going to click on introduction. There's my output. You clicked on the introduction section. Buddy, inclusion. Yeah. So we're still using the same click handler, but instead of writing the function in line, again, I wrote it out here, but this is still just a function reference. This have to be the two arguments to add event listener. What the name of the event is, a function reference to execute when that is broadcast. So here I'm just doing in a for loop over elements by class name. All right, let's move on to another example. Get element by ID page header. Okay, that's my header element there. Explain that. Okay, which is the container of that H1 that we used in the previous video. Okay. So I'm going to define a function. And we'll be working with different events this time. A different kind of mouse event. The mouse over and mouse out. And I'll show you what happens here real quick. So here's a function, handle header mouse over. So when the user takes their mouse and moves it over that element, this is the logic that I want to be executed. Okay, handle header mouse out. When the mouse leaves the element, I want this to be executed. Add some event listeners. These are named a little bit different. We're not using click anymore. 
we're using mouse over. That's the string name of that event. And mouse out, the string name of that mouse event out. So I'm going to say this. So I'm going to move it over this page side up here. What happens? Watch this output down here. When I move it over, it says you moved your mouse over me. It's exactly what I told to execute. Now I'm going to move the mouse out of it. Oh, and it says, why do you leave me? Why do you leave me? All right, you can just do that over and over again. Okay. Browser is a very interactive environment. There are events happening all over the place. Every time you move your mouse through your browser, it may seem like nothing's happening, but behind the scenes, events are getting broadcast all over the place. When you click things, when you move your mouse in, when you move your mouse out, when you press keys, all of that triggers all of these events on all of these elements that are in the DOM. It's all this invisible world that's happening behind the scenes. And now in JavaScript, we can, we can start hooking into that world and saying, for this specific event, okay, I want to start listening to that and do something specific when some of these events start to happen. All right, so that's an example of the mouse over and the mouse out event. Okay, these are just very simplest examples. I'm just putting text into that feedback element that I'm providing to the user. So that's mouse over and mouse out. Okay. Check this out. This is actually one of my favorite things to do with events. Yeah. I'm adding an event listener to the field element. And what is the field element? It's get element by ID key press input. Let's find that on the screen. Key press input. Oh, here it is. It's the input right beneath that introduction, body, and conclusion. Okay. So it's this input field right here. All right, so key up. There are three different events for key events. There is key down, there is key press, and there is key up. And I'm just gonna focus on key up for now. And that is the, mount, the event that is triggered when you depress a key on your keyboard, and then as soon as you let it go, that broadcasts a key up event. All right, so I'm hooking into that. I'm telling the browser when that happens on any key, when somebody's typing into that field, any time that they let go of a key after they've pressed it, I want specific logic to be executed. What is that logic? Well, first off, I'm just going to console log the event. Then I'm going to set the output element. I'm going to set its inner HTML to whatever the current value of the event.target. What is going to be the event.target in this case? It's going to be that input element. That is the DOM element that the user is interacting with, which broadcasts the event. Okay, that becomes the event target. So let's run this real quick, show you what happens. Hi there, NSS student. Look at all these keyboard events that show up in my console. Okay, so every time I let go of a key, one of those events is being broadcast. Now, as I was typing there, you can see Beneath it, that output element I'm using for feedback is automatically mirroring what is being typed into that box. This is creating a binding between the value of the input box and the value or the, the, the text of the input box and the text of that output element. This is called binding. Okay. So let me clear my console here. So I'm just going to type one key in here and H. There's two keyboard events, which is kind of interesting. Why did that happen? Well, because I press capital H. You'll see for this first one, shift key equals true. It actually captured that I clicked on my shift key and then shift key false, it captured that I clicked on my H key. Okay, so it captured both of those key events. Here is the key code. Okay, for H, it is 16. What is it for the shift key? Shift key's key code is 72. Now you're gonna be using this in your exercises, several exercises in your quiz. I'm about to hit my return key. Okay, okay, log the keyboard event. What is its key code? 13. Remember that the key code of the enter key is 13. All right, so in this video, I've showed you how to do mouse over, mouse out, in. But all the syntax is exactly the same. Add event listener with two parameters or two arguments. First one is a string name of the event that we want to listen to. 
Click, mouse over, mouse out, key up. And the second argument has to be a function that defines an input, an, an argument to accept input that is going to be the event which the browser sends it. Okay? So a little bit more advanced usage of event listeners. I hope that helps you on your exercises and your quizzes, and I'll see you.